Welcome to Nepal, a poor country rich in biodiversity, produced and narrated by Tana Johannes. The Federal Republic of Nepal, hereby referred to as Nepal, is situated in South Asia along the foothills of the Himalayan mountain range. This landlocked country is bordered by India to the south, west and east, and by China to the north, with Kathmandu as its capital city. Nepal is home to 27.8 million people and experiences a wide range of temperatures, from 40 degrees Celsius in the southern regions to minus 40 degrees Celsius in the northern regions due to the Himalayan mountain range. This geographic location influences the diversity of species found within Nepal. The main land use of Nepal is cultivation, as Nepal is an agricultural country and their cultivated areas account for 28% of their total land use. Nepal's natural areas have remained mostly intact, with only a few areas being fragmented by these cultivated areas. This developing country is still quite natural and rural, as only 6% of their land is used for artificial areas and roads, whereas 66% is still natural areas. The aim of this film is to demonstrate a conservation plan for the country of Nepal, and to determine whether their current protected areas are sufficient for the protection of the natural areas and the associated wildlife. Nepal has a rich biodiversity due to its location, which encompasses a variety of different landscapes. These landscapes range from lower tropical conditions in the south to tundra conditions in the north. Due to the extreme altitudinal gradient of Nepal, 10 terrestrial ecoregions are present, with 36 different vegetation types. It also has six types of protected areas, three types of grassland regions, and is also part of the Himalayan Biodiversity Hotspot Region. These ecoregions play a critical ecological role as part of the Himalayan ecosystem. The most important of these is the Turaya Dura Savanna and Grassland ecoregion, which is situated along the southern region of the country. This ecoregion is facing severe fragmentation as most of Nepal's agricultural areas are in the same region as this ecoregion. Nepal's protected areas consist of 10 national parks, 3 wildlife reserves, 6 conservation areas, 1 hunting reserve, 9 Ramsar wetland sites and 1 world heritage site, which is the Kathmandu Valley. Most of the protected areas are situated in the northern regions along the Himalayan mountain range as the elevation and climate are not suitable for growing crops. Based on the Living National Treasures website, Nepal has a total of 27 endemic species and these include 2 mammal species, 10 reptile species, 8 amphibian species, 1 species of bird, 5 freshwater fish species and 1 vascular plant species. These are just 3 endemic animals of Nepal, the spiny blabber, Scorbus mouse-eared bat and the Narayangat whooping frog. And these are their respective distribution ranges within Nepal. Based on the IUCN's threatened species list, Nepal has 95 threatened species within their country. These include 31 mammals, 33 birds, 9 reptiles, 3 amphibians, 7 fish, 1 mollusk, 2 other invertebrates and 9 plant species. Nepal has many endangered, vulnerable, keystone and iconic species and three of these species listed as endangered include the red panda, the clouded leopard and the one-horned rhino, which even though are not endemic to the country, still need protection within the country. As these species distribution ranges include Nepal. Nepal has several main conservation stakeholders and all these stakeholders play a vital role in the conservation of Nepal. Some of these include WWF, Annapurna Conservation Area Project, Nepal Foresters Association, BirdLife Conservation Nepal, and the IUCN. There are two types of conservation planning units, namely a systematic conservation planning unit and an ecological planning unit. Both types were used to determine the best possible conservation plan for the country. However, the systematic approach worked best, as it focused on dividing the country into equal hexagons for locating, designing and managing the protected areas which represent the biodiversity of the region of Nepal, which resulted in 783 planning units. The ecological planning unit approach 
focuses on the ecological aspect of the area, such as elevation, catchments or rainfall, which resulted in 945 planning units for one of 19 targets were chosen to demonstrate a systematic conservation planning unit. Targets are the amount of species or types of habitats which we want to conserve, and these targets are based on the IUCN, Living National Treasures and GBIF websites respectively. However, due to a lack of distribution data on the IUCN website regarding the endemic species of Nepal, endangered, keystone and iconic species were also chosen to partake in this exercise. This resulted in 7 endemic targets, 8 endangered targets, 2 vulnerable targets, 1 threatened target and 1 target of least concern. Data was downloaded from DivaJS, IUCN and Protected Planet websites respectively. The program ArcView was used to determine systematic conservation planning units based on hexagons. DivaJS was used to export grid files to Idrisi32, and Idrisi32 was used to import shape files such as the country's boundary, their water areas, protected areas, and the distribution range of the targets. In Idrisi32, a cost service analysis was conducted, and this included preparing a distance DK model for agricultural and artificial areas within the country. A final cost service analysis was determined by using population density, agricultural and artificial areas. A land tenure map, which consists of the country's roads and landscapes, was prepared. Another land tenure passes map, which consists of the country's protected areas, was created. These two maps were used to determine Marksand. Marksand is a software program that identifies new conservation areas which could meet your conservation target at a minimal cost. A conservation target indicates how much of the species range needs to be protected. Thus, a suitable conservation target was chosen at 40% protection per target species. The species penalty factor is a value given to the targets to indicate its importance for inclusion in the reserve network. The higher the value, the more likely that a species target is met. Thus, a suitable species penalty factor of 10 was chosen. The Marksan input and output section needs to be completed before the Marksan parameters. Once this has been completed, run Marksan. The total number of targets protected under the current protected areas is only 2 out of the 19 targets. The new additional protected areas, however, would protect 14 out of the 19 targets as only 5 would be unprotected. The current protected areas are in blue and the additional protected areas which are required are red. The majority of the new areas are in the southern regions as these areas are fragmented due to Nepal's agricultural activities being mostly in the south. The only two targets which are currently protected based on Marksan is the Nepalese field mouse and the one-horned rhino. The 14 species which could be protected if these additional areas were added include the Bengal tiger, the Chitwin burrowing frog, the Indian bison, the Hispid hare and the Asiatic elephant to mention but a few. It can therefore be said that based on Marksan, Nepal's current protected areas are not effective in protecting their biodiversity. More natural areas need to be protected and that these natural areas should not be fragmented by agricultural or artificial areas. Based upon the results generated by Marksan, the new protected areas meet 74% of the total targets, 100% of the endemic targets are met, 75% of the endangered targets are met, and 100% of the least concerned target is met. The country of Nepal is a poor country which relies heavily on tourism, but often it experiences avalanches and earthquakes which affect their tourism facilities. Nepal has a rich biodiversity due to the location of the country, but the current protected areas are not sufficient for conserving this biodiversity. Therefore, it is suggested that more natural areas need to be conserved. 